Yo, what's going on guys and welcome back to yet another video, a different type of video today where I'd like to talk about my experiences on the differences between the games F1 2021 and F1 2022 or F1 22 as it's actually called by EA Sports. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's just jump straight in. Anyway. All right, so a little bit of backstory to begin with, ladies and gentlemen, feel free to skip to the time code shown on the screen if you want to skip this part but someone close to me basically got me an f1 uh just before uh that championship decided in december in abu dhabi between lewis hamilton and max verstappen um and the obsession if you you know if that's what you want to call it went from there basically uh i started to learn all i could as far as the rules regulations teams and everything else was concerned um and then i discovered that f1 21 or F1 2021 was um, on the Xbox Game Pass, the actual game. Uh, so naturally, you know what, I took the opportunity to download it and I gave it a shot. And to be honest, I've always enjoyed racing games, the likes of Forza and Need for Speed being the most predominant, um, more to the point Forza Horizon. Let's just uh, put that out there. Uh, but yeah, F1 was always a game that I never really, you know, gave a fair chance at or a fair run at. And I wish I had done sooner because I had an absolute blast um, from January to, well, just a few days ago. Um, you know, taking what I'd learned in the real world about the whole rules, regulations, all the tire compounds and what they do and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then translating it into the game. And again, I had a really, really good time playing it. I genuinely felt like I was part of the game and it felt more immersive to me in that respect. And don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, that EA are notorious for breaking their games, but F1 2021 actually felt really good to play. Uh, so I naturally grabbed F1 22 when it was, you know, announced um, this year. So let's just get into the whole discussion part of the, you know, between the two games. So one of the first topics that I'd like to discuss today, ladies and gentlemen, is the handling and physics. So EA have dubbed F1 22 as the next era of F1 in their gaming franchise, and for good reasons. Traditionally, F1 cars are super grippy, um, even more so depending on what tyres you're using, such as the soft compound tyres, uh, which I believe are the C5s uh, from Pirelli. And F1 2021... Um, you know, you got a semi-realistic feel of that grip while the car remained kind of clunky um, and it was kind of responsive at times, more noticeably on tracks such as Monaco or Saudi Arabia. Um, and I feel that between F1 2021 and F1 22, that this has been massively improved upon. Now, on the left, you're seeing footage from F1 2021 and on the right, you're seeing F1 2022. Um, you may not be able to see the difference visually, uh, but thanks to the new and improved force feedback system and the more precise car tuning and the more realistic values for tyres and aerodynamics, um, you know, your car is going to be a lot more responsive in this year's game than last year's. I found things like cornering and tyre consumption and tyre management, grip responsiveness between your tyres and the track, um, those kind of areas is where the improvements were more noticeable and using the same settings I was last year I found that in F122 I wasn't drifting as much or I wasn't losing as much grip um, when I was cornering a tight bend such as turns 6 and 7 on Monaco or turns I think it's 13 and 14 on Saudi Arabia basically uh, in Saudi Arabia there's like a there's like a S bend um, about a quarter of the way around the track and it's absolutely annoying as shit so if you haven't got your aerodynamic set properly it's a real bitch to take um but in like i say in f122 i felt like this was massively improved upon and i'm really glad that it has been the second topic that i'd like to discuss ladies and gentlemen is the graphics now typically you know i won't really blabber on too much about this uh this little section as i am playing f122 on pc so ideally what i want to say is that f122 looks a lot more detailed and is a lot more vibrant at 4k 244 fps blah 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 however what i am going to say is that ea have put a lot more effort into the car models and decals the npcs static displays such as the um lcd screens or led screens um that you have in front of your car in practice or qualifying as well as uh screens in the background of your garage um you know things like crowd animations as well have been dramatic uh, dramatically improved and even the little things such as damage textures uh damage rendering and damage modeling uh asphalt marks that your cars leave behind such as um you know 
skid marks, etc. And even improved textures and modeling for tire wear as the race goes on. And as your tires start to get that, you know, that bit, little bit thinner, then you notice your wheels sort of being like chunky to start off with. But as the race goes on, you start wearing them down a lot more, your tires will eventually shrink. Now, that is something that I really, really liked about F122, as I did a race on uh, Australia and I, I stuck with the soft compound tires, the C5 uh, Pirelli tires, for as long as I could. And it literally, like, the tires started off thick to start off with. But as I got into about laps 15 to 20, they started to, like, shrink. And I, I noticed that, and I really, really liked that. The third topic I would like to quickly talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is the AI or artificial intelligence in the games. So in F1 21, I had the AI set originally to 75%, which meant that they should have given me a hard time on the track, and they should have made me fight for places in qualifying, as well as the actual race. But unfortunately it just didn't really feel like that um even after increasing the difficulty difficulties uh to 90 percent in f1 2021 i was still finding it relatively easy to win races and at such distances as distances sorry of about 20 seconds between myself and p1 uh and someone like max verstappen down in p2 so i was like way out in front um to start off with and then as the race went on, especially at 75%, I was like a minute or so ahead uh, going into like the final lap for argument's sake. Whereas um, in, you know, 90%, I was about 20 seconds. So that sort of distance was a lot smaller, but it was still big enough to be like quite a way ahead. So if I did screw up, like spin out or anything like that, then I wasn't in that much danger of losing the race. However, in this year's F122, I set the difficulty to 90% to begin with and immediately found it to be a challenge. Was it because I hadn't got used to the new physics yet, or did EA do something to the AI and how it responds to you? Well, turns out it was a little bit of both, ladies and gentlemen. EA have implemented adaptive AI into this year's game, something that's already been around other franch or that like their other franchises, such as FIFA and Madden, for the last couple of years. So basically, what adaptive AI means is that despite you setting the AI difficulty to 90%, they'll still learn how you drive as time goes on, and they'll get better at countering your own maneuvers. For, for example, if you're taking corners at a very, you know, if you're starting to break very late, and then sort of moving into a very sharp turning angle, then the AI will also start to learn how to do that, to then counter your doing that, and then increase or shrink sorry the distance between you two to make it a more challenging race and then that way it again it creates the challenge it creates the difficulty that you would expect from setting your difficulty to something like 90 percent so as the race goes on you'll find that the ai is literally riding your tail and even might be even slightly faster than you down a straight um to provide you with that little bit extra challenge again that keeps the game you know it keeps the game feeling fresh and engaging for both new and returning players overall this is definitely a step up from last year there is a few more modes to come apparently uh from what i've been reading on twitter um i don't have the tweets available unfortunately as i couldn't find them so i can't unfortunately source screenshot them in this video um, but there is a lot more to come apparently, um, especially as the game cycle goes on. And there's more multiplayer inclusion for modes such as Race Weekends and the returning two-player My Team Korea, which I plan to do with stealthily as a stream series. Um, whether or not we do it or not is a completely different question. Would I recommend you pick it up? Well, if you're an F1 fan, ladies and gentlemen, or just even just an enthusiast like me, for sure, pick it up. I'm having an absolute blast, and I know that you will too. So that will wrap up today's video, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you so very much for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, drop a like. And if you're new to the channel, sub and ring the bell. Share the video and channel with your friends and family. Get them involved and get them to join the community as well and all that good stuff, ladies and gentlemen. But yeah, thanks for watching, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Take care of yourselves and goodbye.